Hey guys, today we're back in a Ford Bronco. This is a Badlands Advanced four-door manual. Kind of my ideally specced Bronco. Uh, a little bit of luxury, a little bit of off-road capability. We're on the 33-inch BFG KO2 tires. Let's walk you around this real quick. I wanted to give you guys some first impressions on what it's like to drive this four-door Bronco. We tested a two-door manual earlier this year, and uh, or actually last year in 2021, and I really, really enjoyed it, really liked it. We have a hard top in this Bronco, which I actually really quite like. Reduces wind noise quite a bit, even though you don't get to enjoy as much top-down action. But for Michigan winters, it's a pretty ideal setup. You also get a lot easier access to the rear. This tailgate opens nicely, and then this pops right up, and you've got a ton of space. I was actually able to fit my fat tire mountain bike in the back of this Bronco yesterday. It's a 27.5 inch wheel and a even larger tire. So kind of one of the bigger mountain bike setups you can get with everything on. I didn't have to take the seat off. I didn't have to remove the front wheel. Seats folded down, everything fit back here. So there's quite a bit of storage space in the back of this Bronco. Back seats, same story. They're tilted back at a little bit of a funny angle, but you get back here, it's pretty comfortable. You can re raise these headrests up. If I were getting one of these, I would actually kind of consider this along with a Sasquatch, or maybe even over a Sasquatch. Some, sometimes I think the Sasquatch is a bit of a bit of overkill. And this is kind of the sweet spot and what you need with uh, good road manners, keeping the wheel and tire package lightweight and uh, priced down, even though the Sasquatch looks so freaking cool. You can only get the Sasquatch in a manual with a two door right now. They'll, they might add it to the four door, but uh, for me, the four door Bronco is just so much more practical and it's so much easier to get into the back seats. This is painted in rapid red. Pretty nice color. Love the front grille. We've got the modular front bumpers on here. All steel. Again, I'll include some detailed specs and info on this in the description. Such a cool vehicle. <laughs> At a glance, kind of hard to distinguish from a Jeep sometimes, but I love the shape of this. All right, let's take this on the road get some winter driving impressions. We have uh, most of the roads have already been cleared today, but we'll see if we can find some snowy back road action. You've got all of your four wheel drive modes, uh, two high, four high, four low, four auto, <clears throat> and your go over any train modes right here in the center. We're mostly just gonna leave it in normal today. Here's your key fob, pretty basic, pretty straightforward for the manual car. No remote start on that. We've got a heated steering wheel, heated seats. Very welcome today because it is 12 degrees Fahrenheit out. All your window switches are in the middle, right near the center console. You've got a little bit of storage down there, a couple of cup holders. I really like this wireless charging area. It keeps your phone kind of locked in on the wireless charger. Even if you accelerate, it doesn't tilt back because there's a little bit of a ridge that keeps it pressed against the charging. Uh, unit, which is neat. Pretty spacious glove box. You've got your sway bar disconnect, your locking front and rear differentials right up there, as well as your traction control off button, which we are going to be pressing uh, quite a bit today. Yes, please. We're going to start off in four wheel drive auto. Lots of physical controls and buttons. I love the ergonomics in this new Bronco. Super easy to live with. In the Badlands, you get this yellow trim around your grab handles and down there. I kind of like that. A little bit different from the blue trim that you get in the other models. There's really a lot to like in this new Bronco. I think it's a little bit expensive and it feels a little bit cheap inside, but the driving experience is hilarious. It's really fun. This manual is actually quite good. I prefer it over the Wrangler's manual transmission. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the older Focus ST shifter, maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit lighter, a little bit plasticier, not as solid and rubbery, but uh, still a very good manual transmission to drive. Gears are a little bit long, but you kind of get into a rhythm with this Bronco manual. 
and I would have the manual over an automatic. It's, it's that good of a manual transmission. It makes the driving experience that much more enjoyable on a daily basis, in my opinion. So, four-wheel drive auto, tons of traction in this drive mode. Pretty much just kind of figures everything out on its own. Love the tuning of this 2.3. You can rev match downshift very easily. I said in my initial impressions of this Bronco manual that it drives a little bit like a sports car. It's about as fun to row through the gears in this as it is a performance product. Engine makes a good noise. A little bit of road tire noise over bumps. This is a Bronco, after all, you can take all the roof panels off, make this a convertible, take the doors off. Everything comes apart, which I think is pretty cool. This engine is responsive, and there's actually quite a bit of power here. Let's throw us into too high. Yes, the Bronco can hoon. You can have a little bit of sideways fun in this thing. I was a little bit worried when I drove the two-door how the power would feel in this four-door Bronco, but I am happy to report the power feels excellent. A little over 300 horsepower on 93 octane, or 91 octane in this truck. You can put 87 in it, but for that extra grunt, you're gonna want the good stuff. Steering is fast. And at the limit, this thing kind of handles like a sports car. It's pretty impressive. Even these KO2s are very grippy. And that's not usually the case with uh, the BFG KO2s in the snow. Usually they have some issues. You can mob in this thing, it's fun. Red line's at 6,500 RPM. You've got a very meaty mid-range. I'm not a huge fan of the rev counter, it's kind of this linear line that goes up and down. It's not a gauge that sweeps, but you get used to it. And you can also just kind of rely on the engine sound to know where you are on the revs. This EcoBoost does sound very nice. Lots of cameras in this Badlands Advanced. You got 360 cam, nice reverse camera. The Bronco Raptor was just released yesterday, and I'm a little bit conflicted, because I, I would actually buy one of these. I think it is that fun of a driving experience that I would want to daily this, and I really, 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 really like this manual transmission. I think it makes the experience that much more enjoyable. And the Bronco Raptor, probably going to be around $70,000. And something like this, for around forty-five, fifty, dollars it's still a lot of money. But um, I think it just delivers a fantastic driving experience. It's super fun. And the manual really is a huge selling point for me personally. would be cool to get back to a, a daily driver with a manual transmission. And this is kind of the ideal Michigan vehicle. You can have fun in two-wheel drive. You can put it into four-wheel drive and really get some high-speed mobbing on the back roads or in the snow. 
You can take it off-road. It'll handle all the potholes and bumps incredibly well. The rod quality here is excellent. The only thing that's a bit strange is the stock tire pressure, or the recommended tire pressure, on these KO2s is 39 PSI, which seems a little bit high. For a vehicle this weight, you would normally see a recommended pressure of about 33 to 35, and 39, I feel like that's a, that's a fuel economy move right there. Rev hang is super minimal. By the time it takes to shift this uh, six speed or seven speed or whatever people are calling it these days, your revs are dropped into pretty much the area where you need to be in the, in the RPM range. There's a good amount of torque. You just have to rev this thing out to kind of compensate for the tall gearing. Getting on the highway, we have to turn traction control back on to enable cruise. But in this manual car, we have lane keep assist, we have adaptive cruise control, and it works really well. Ford does a great job with these systems. A little bit of wind noise, it's kind of noisy, but that's okay, I could live with this. Definitely a big improvement over the soft top NVH levels. The road manners of this Bronco are such a drastic difference to a Wrangler. We were just in a Wrangler 392 and that had the best road manners of any Wrangler I'd ever driven. And this Bronco is just in another league. So 79 miles an hour on the highway, you're sitting at about 2400 RPM, should average about 18 miles to the gallon in this. Not terrible, considering it's lifted, it's got 33 inch tires. Maybe a little bit more if you're uh, keeping your top speeds down, if you're 65, 70 miles an hour on the highway probably get into the 20s. This Bang & Olufsen sound system is pretty good. It does help drown out the wind noise, the little creaks and rattles from the back. Like that, that is an option that I could do without, but it is a really nice sound system. It's powerful, it's got great bass. We'll do a sound system test towards the end of this video. There's a really satisfying pull to this EcoBoost when you get into the higher revs. It sounds good. The turbo really comes on power. <laughs> it's fun. All right, let's go find some back roads. It's also nice to be able to enjoy this Bronco at reasonable speeds on main roads. I think that's one of the finer points. It's kind of the Miata of off-roaders. You can go wide open throttle everywhere on this thing and you're not really speeding that much. Who knew that one of the most driver-focused and engaging vehicles of 2021, 2022 would be the Bronco? I mean, I, I really, I can't say enough good things about the driving experience with this thing. I really, really do love driving this. You can heel toe downshift. <laughs> the calibration of this engine and this six speed is really well done. It's just such a a nice gearbox. I wouldn't mind a little bit more heft from the shifter, but I'm sure there will be shift, short shift kits, all that. As standard though, after living with it for a couple days, this is just a, it's a very satisfying manual transmission to drive. Clutch is light, catch point is easy. You can drive this very smoothly, 
without too much effort too. It's not like you're always struggling to get smooth, easy shifts out of this. So we've got some rough roads up here, unplowed. We're gonna turn off traction control. a lot of body roll so once you get past that grip limit it's pretty easy to control and pretty progressive let's put us into four auto show you guys the traction and four wheel drive we're just in normal mode you can also put this in Baja and you get a front facing camera which is kind of cool a little bit more aggressive of an engine note one of my only complaints about this Bronco is that there are a lot of rattles and they're all kind of coming from the back area. It would be nice to see those start to kind of get sorted with time, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't ruin the car. It's just kind of a little bit of an unfortunate circumstance. Four-wheel drive, lots of traction. Brakes are good too. Let's throw us into Baja mode. There we go. It's gonna put us into four high. And it's gonna turn advanced track on. Let's do a little bit of a launch here. Really impressed with the snow performance on these KO2s. <laughs> nice. Off road use only. Traction control seems to figure itself out pretty well. This is fun. A Raptor is just going to give you paddle shifters and more power. But as it sits, I love this driving experience. We're going to go back into two wheel drive high. more aggressive engine calibration program in Baja mode. Boost comes on quicker. There's a little bit more torque throughout the rev range. It just, it feels good. <laughs> or at least there's a little bit more torque early on in the rev range. It's a fun drive mode. quality off-road is very good too even with that 39 psi in the tires once you get into the higher speed stuff it tends to kind of float over larger bumps pretty well and same goes for on-road ride quality i think the uh, longer wheelbase of this four-door definitely helps with that compared to the two-door bronco though the two-door was 
a decent ride handling balance too. I like the nimbleness of that chassis. The short wheelbase is just super fun. And you feel like you're in a little bit more of an active handling vehicle. This four-door though, the compromises I think are very few for the added practicality. It's so great having the ability to switch between four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive in a vehicle like this. Lots of steering angle to work with too. It has an awesome turning radius. Add in trail turn assist and pretty much rotate on the rear tire. into four auto. There's something freeing about the idea that you can just kind of go over all these bumps and ruts and hit some of these roads without really worrying about anything happening. Yes, this is a little bit of a plasticky, cheaper feeling vehicle, but it feels solid and it feels like it's it's gonna last a long time just because it feels like it can take some abuse. The high speed handling characteristics here are pretty impressive too. For this just being a Badlands non Sasquatch. I think Ford has achieved something pretty special here with this new Bronco. It really scratches that enthusiast itch, especially with this manual transmission. It manages to be fun on-road, off-road. And you can enjoy it in a really wide range of disciplines too. It does high speed driving really quite well. It does rock crawling incredibly well. The manual transmission is fantastic for just daily use. It doesn't fall apart when you try to really hustle it and get some performance out of the, the powertrain. It's one of the few new vehicles on sale today that I think is one of the, the more lovable cars. It's got a sense of humor, it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's a very, very enjoyable driving experience. I am just... Uh, a little bit smitten with the new Bronco. It's not perfect, but guess what? Nothing is. That's what I've learned doing this for the last 12 years, is there is no perfect car. There is maybe a right car for you at the right time, but sometimes you grow out of that. Sometimes your priorities change. I will say this has been a fantastic vehicle to drive the last couple days and my first impressions on this are really strong. This is one of my favorite vehicles that I've driven in recent memory. It's good to have my suspicions confirmed on this Bronco Badlands with a manual because I, I was kind of thinking this might be the ideal spec. I've had less fun in sports cars. <laughs> I really have. Put us back into four high here.
rally car this. <laughs> Traction is just awesome. These are not grippy roads right now. It's pretty slick out. It's pretty cold. And this Bronco is just taking it like a champ. Two thousand RPM or so. Boost comes on. Builds pretty progressively, and the mid range is just so satisfying in this in this Bronco. It does fall off a little bit in those higher revs. Alright guys, well I think that's going to wrap up the video on this Bronco. We will end with a B&O sound system test and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. One of the complaints that I had about the Wrangler 392 was that you couldn't slide it around in two-wheel drive mode. And the Bronco fixes that. <laughs> no nannies, no stability control kicking in. Off is off. And I really appreciate that. Thank you, Ford.
All right, top marks for the Bronco, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.